Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF mod video. Now today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at our latest mod build in the relatively new Fantix Evolve ATX Glass Edition case. Now if you're not familiar with the case or you have seen it around and you wanna know some more info on it, we did do a uh, sort of a comprehensive review on this uh, recently. I'll throw it in the description or, or somewhere in this uh, video, whether it's posted on Facebook or YouTube. I'll throw it in there. Uh, the Evolve ATS Glass Edition comes in three different uh, three different colors. So pretty much a black, a dark gray, and a silver. Now we've got the Galaxy Silver, as you can see here. Wanted to go something a little bit different. Uh, you don't normally get too many silver cases. So we went with this one. We went with the yellow theme. Uh, as you can see, we completely changed the inside there. Just painted that yellow. Not sure if you can pick it up here, but along the top here, we've gone with the painted the mesh yellow. Sort of done some few aesthetics on the outside. I really didn't want to start hacking up this case because this is like full aluminium, full aluminium here. It's got tempered glass on each side. I really didn't want to sort of uh, change that. I wanted to keep it in the best form I could. I'll just take this side panel off just in case it's got some reflections there. But um, I must admit it is a really, really nice case and it is nice to work with inside. So I didn't do too much. Um, too much uh, sort of crazy work on the inside. Let's put that down. All right, so as you can see, that is the build there. So first of all, we'll go with the hardware uh, I selected for this build and what uh, some of the sponsors sent out. So of course, it's the case, uh, which I just mentioned then. So actually, PC Kasky sent this out to us to do a uh, review on the case and do a final build. So that is a nice looking case, as you can see. Now going on to the motherboard, uh, ASRock sent out the Z170 uh, OC formula. I really, really love this board. It's one of the very, very few that can do double or triple NVM SS SSDs in RAID 0 and you can make them bootable as well. Uh, not many of them allows you to install an OS on them and boot them at the same time. Okay, so moving on to some of the other stuff. CPU is a 6600K, nothing too fancy there. Uh, the RAM and SSD is, uh, we've recently uh, sort of collaborated with A-Pacer. Uh, they've been really re uh, producing some really nice stuff. Uh, we've gone with their Panther series, so in the Panther uh, RAM, it really does match this build well. It's not, a, it's not the exactly the same yellow, but it is sort of a yellow goldish color, which I really did like with this build. And then we've gone with the A-Pacer uh, SSD as well. Now that is a 480 gig uh, down there. And then we've gone with the, uh, the 16 gig of memory from them as well. Um, I actually picked up a Samsung uh, 950 Pro NVMe SSD myself. You can't really see it, but it's in one of the one of, of the three slots in there. Uh, that is the OS drive. Really, really nice SSD there. Uh, video cards. I reused some GTX 780s I had. Now this was going to have two 980s, but I've got a humongous build coming up where I've need to uh, try and scan around all my 980s for that build. So I did sort of fall back to 780s for me. Um, 780s, uh, two of them in uh, SLI still perform really good, so I had no issues with them. Um, with using them uh, in the build. Moving on to the power supply, you can't really see. Uh, once again, see Sonic coming to the party. They've been really, really great to us. So we've gone with a 1050 watt snow silent. Really love that um, that series of power supplies. And the cables, you can see the yellow and silver are uh, the uh, cables from Cable Mod. Now, they've been really good to us, uh, sponsoring a lot of our builds recently as well. Then lastly, the components uh, for this build are the Bits Power water cooling. So we've got Bits Power blocks, CPU blocks, GPU blocks, you can see on the 780s, the CPU block, and then all the white fittings uh, as well. And it really sort of makes it pop against the yellow. I wasn't quite sure if I should have gone silver fittings, white fittings, or black fittings. I decided to go white, add a little bit of contrast, I think it turned out uh, pretty good. Now, a lot of people have been requesting sort of some more information about the little screens I use in these builds. Now, these are nothing fancy. It's nothing I've had to hack up. I've got one here with me. This is a seven inch version. What I've got in here is a 5.5. They're just a standard screen from eBay. Uh, it looks like a, a bit of a mess, like a bit of contraption, but all you've got is the panel. You've got a, a ribbon cable to the controller board then this uh, hangs off with which is sort of your your menu options from a standard screen so you got like power uh, menu arrow keys and uh, and your source uh, button so it does take hdmi which i use all the time it can also take like s video you probably won't use and it can also take your standard vga d sub and then it just requires 12 volts and i just normally grab a little connector you can buy and that just goes straight onto a 
uh, Molex connector. So they are really, really nice. A lot of people have been asking me uh, how I get the sensor uh, program running on there because a lot of times you see fancy dials and, and CPU stats. But um, I use uh, ADA64, it's been around for years. It's just a standard uh, sort of mo monitoring program. It tells you stats about your computer, tells you your temps and stuff. I just make a custom sensor panel. Uh, I spend a few, a few hours in Photoshop designing the background, um, adding, adding different layers, and then I can import that into the sensor panel and then it just all over, uh, overlays and you can move the things around. So I'll just turn it on now and we'll see, um, we'll see that boot up and we'll just get a little close, close look at the actual uh, panel itself. All right, so the system is booted up now and then as you can see, it's now the sensor panel is running up on the screen. Now I do set A to 64 just to auto start and then the sensor panel just pops up. So when you do set these uh, little panels up, they just come up as a secondary screen on your PC. So if you're familiar with setting up dual screens, you just drag one next to each other, depending on which way it is on your desk. And then you just drag the sensor panel onto it. Now the res on this one is 800 by uh, 480, which it might not seem much, but it's actually really, really, uh, has quite a lot of detail, which is really nice. I was surprised when I first, um, first saw them, but yeah, that's pretty much the panel there. Uh, moving on to some of the other uh, sort of mods I did, I added these sort of side skirts, one here, one here. I did originally have these black, I uh, then decided to add some sort of pattern on it to try and uh, try and make it a bit unique and a bit different because the black did look a little bit bland. Then at the top here, I added these two cutout sort of panels or little hole bits and they just have the Azrock and Apexer logos. Now they are RGB backlits, so if I grab the remote, which I stuck on the back here, I can cycle through some colors there. It's hard to see in sort of this light, but at night they really do come up nice. I do like to keep it at white though, because that seems to look the best. Uh, other colors, I sort of, or other lighting areas and other sort of mods I did was I added another sort of uh, bottom plane here just to clean it up a bit and for the pass-throughs. Now I've had quite a people saying that how did I get the uh, glowing ring around the pass-throughs? Now they are RGB as well. Well, a lot of my sort of side panels and custom panel work, I use opal acrylic. Now, opal acry acrylic uh, is used for light boxes. It's really good for uh, distributing light evenly. Now, if you use clear, light's gonna go straight through, and if you use a solid color, uh, you're not gonna get any light through as well. Uh, so with this bottom panel here, I simply uh, did it as, as normal, measured it to size, cut the holes for the pass-throughs th pass th and all that. Now, opal is white, so before I went to paint it black, I just put some uh, little rings around the, um, the pass-through holes that sort of were a little bit wider than the hole. So then when I went to paint it, I painted it, then I pulled those uh, bits of vinyl off. So now I've got these nice little uh, areas where there's no paint, and when it's nice and dark, I've got it set to blue at the moment, uh, you get this really nice glowing ring. Uh, providing you've, you've got nothing obstructing it underneath uh, where you've got your RGB strips, you'll get a nice even light as well. Uh, but then I've added where the reservoir is, I've added another black panel on there because the case was quite uneven uh, with random screws and, and little indents for things. So I added a panel there. Uh, the reservoir just simply goes in and out straight through that back panel through the uh, pass-through fittings. And then some of the other lighting is the built-in case lighting that comes with the case. Now, if you are familiar with this, uh, Fantex have added sort of an RGB controller in the case and you can grab uh, RGB strips from them. Uh, I think they come in one or two meter length. So it's this button here to turn it on. And as you can see, that's set on now. There's, it's pretty much just the same as one of these, but it's built in into the case. Uh, you can change the lighting effects, the colors. I can cycle through the different colors here like this. Um, and whatnot, but I seem to like white. I think the best looks good. So yeah, as you can see, I have spent quite a little bit of time on work and working on the different lighting effects um, with this case, the ones up here, the ones around these pass-through fittings, and then the whole case lighting um, as well. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, this video. If you're wondering what the coolant is, it is the uh, Thermal Take op um, Opaque C1000. Um, it's pretty much sort of like a pastel coolant. It's not like a sort of a clear see-through uh, cordial one. As you can see, the yellow looks really solid and I really do like the, that line of coolant. But yeah, as you can see, I think yellow did come out pretty good uh, for a build. You don't see too many yellow builds. Um, it is something a, a little bit different. I, I guess you see a lot of red and black builds. But yeah, I just want to thank all the sponsors for um, sending this gear for, uh, for this build. And I just want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.